let's go exploring again and pay a visit to the biggest water park in the galaxy. Welcome to Kepler 22b. Let's find out more. I make a new science video each week and so if you enjoy what I do then please don't forget to subscribe. If you hit the bell icon you'll also get a notification when a new video is released, though it'll be Friday. Located about 638 light years away we find Kepler 22. This is a G type star very similar to our own Sun. In fact it has 97% of our Sun's mass and 98% of its radius. It also has 80% of the luminosity of our Sun, so we can see initially that these stars are very similar. More exciting than the fact that we've found a star similar to our Sun is the additional fact that smack bang within the habitable zone, Kepler 22 has a planet called, well, Kepler 22b. So what kind of planet is Kepler 22b? The truth is we don't completely know, but there are some characteristics of this planet that we do know, and we can make some hypotheses about the other conditions there. We know that Kepler 22b has a radius about 2.4 times that of the Earth. This means that it's about halfway in size between the Earth and Neptune. We also know that it orbits its parent star at a distance of about 130 million kilometers. This puts its orbit again somewhere between that of Venus and the Earth. It also takes 290 days to complete one orbit, meaning it's got a year similar to a year here on Earth. It is possible that Kepler 22b could be a mini Neptune. That's a planet with a solid core and a thick gaseous atmosphere. More likely though, and I think more interestingly, is the idea that this is a water world. Again, a rocky core surrounded by huge oceans encircling the entire planet. The planet is right in the zone where liquid water would exist, and so another blue dot is a very real possibility. We don't really know the mass of the planet yet, but some estimates are in the region of about 36 times that of the Earth. If that's the case, then the surface gravity will be about 6 times here on Earth. 6 Gs is the most extreme g-force a person would experience on even the most extreme of roller coasters. This is more Gs than the Apollo astronauts experienced on liftoff. The g-force exerted by this planet will push your blood to your feet and away from your brain. Most people lose consciousness after only a few seconds of being subjected to this level of force. However, that's very much an estimate. Kepler 22b was discovered by the transit method, where a star will dim ever so slightly as a planet passes in front of it. This allows us to estimate quite well the radius of the planet, but tells us very little about its mass. Other estimates of the mass have suggested somewhere between 6 and 15 times that of the Earth. The lower estimate would give Kepler 22b a surface gravity only slightly above that here on Earth. Whatever the gravity, if life has developed in the buoyant conditions found in the oceans, the gravity, extreme or otherwise, wouldn't be a problem. High gravity also isn't necessarily a barrier to the development of life anyway. It just means that life would have evolved differently to life here on Earth, and would develop adaptations to allow it to survive in high gravity situations. So what other conditions might we expect on this rocky behemoth? It's in the right kind of area for liquid water to exist, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it does. If Kepler 22b really does have an Earth-like atmosphere, no matter what the actual composition, the surface of continuous water really is a possibility. The temperature over the planet would be a balmy but not deadly 22 degrees Celsius or 72 Fahrenheit. There is another possibility however. Kepler 22b falls in the right area where it could either be a more Earth-like or it could be more Venus-like. If a thick atmosphere rich in greenhouse gases existed, Kepler 22b could find itself going down the same planetary evolution as our neighbour Venus. This would mean that energy from the star would find it difficult to leave the planet's atmosphere and could result in temperatures over the planet of about 460 degrees Celsius. In addition, water on these ocean worlds would be unlike water here on Earth. 
Even though water covers about 70% of the surface of our planet, it only accounts for a tiny fraction of the Earth's mass. On these water worlds, the oceans would be so deep and so expansive that at lower depths, even at very high temperatures, the pressure would be so intense that the water would form an exotic form of ice called Ice 5. Now that's sci-fi if you ever heard it. These planets might not have any land poking above the waves at all. So could Kepler-22b have life? If it is indeed a water world, it could most definitely host life. Kepler-22 is about 4 billion years old. Compared to the 4.6 billion years for our Sun, this means that there has been sufficient time for life to evolve on this planet, and it may contain one of the most important ingredients for life, that of liquid water. We can't know if life has in fact evolved, or indeed the possible nature of that life, but it is nice to imagine the directions evolution might have taken on a planet dominated so much by a watery environment. The only issue to the possible development of life on this planet is oddly enough the amount of water there. Our seas are salty, and that salt is actually important nutrients that life growing in the seas requires. Those nutrients get into the water by washing off the rocks and the sea floor. If you were to increase the amount of water in our seas, then those important nutrients would become more and more dilute. There comes a point at which those nutrients will become so dilute that they wouldn't be able to support life as we know it. Also, at extreme depths of water, the pressure of the water would be so high that it would effectively stop tectonic movements, blocking the volcanic activity needed to bring about the right conditions for life. This is all just conjecture though, and we don't really know if life has developed there or not. I, for one, like to believe that it has. Sadly though, at 600 light years away, don't expect to be going on that day trip anytime soon. I, for one, am a science optimist, and I like to think that as we learn more and more about the universe, we'll learn more and more about this interesting world. But for now, let us return to Earth, and as always, thank you for watching.